Good luck, man. All right, thanks, Grant. Congrats to all the winners. Welcome back, everyone. Um, our marketing team actually tells me that we've got um, a bunch of digital copies of some of the Manning books as well. I think maybe 10, 12, something like that. So um, I think next week, uh, they're going to look at all the people who've done social media and tweets this week. And uh, the ones they find to be the most interesting, I think they're going to start giving those out. So keep that in mind if you want to talk about the conference uh, between now and, I don't know, tomorrow. OK, so I have the pleasure of wrapping up our conference today with a bit of a discussion on the future of search and AI. Uh, Grant just thanked our amazing sponsors, but I also want to take a quick moment to thank all of our customers and attendees here at Activate as well. Because without you guys, uh, LucidWorks wouldn't be here. And we wouldn't be able to collectively all build the future of search and AI together. So um, give a round of applause for all the people here and all the, the great conversations you've had this week. All right. So um, this being the you know, first Activate, the continuation of Lucy and Solar Revolution, uh, we're excited to share some fun stats with you. So this year, we had uh, 612 attendees here. Uh, with 70 sections of expert content. Uh, we're actually really excited that our community continues to grow and share what's you know, being worked on uh, both near and far. Um, and you've all been really fortunate this week to get to meet hundreds of search experts from around the globe. Um, and by around the globe, I truly mean it. Um, if you look at the, uh, the numbers here, we've had 39 countries represented here at the conference this week. Uh, 39, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, and so we have attendees who've traveled from all over the world and to uh, show you guys, sorry, back over here. Um, this is a map that um, we've put together. It's a cool display and a physical representation of where all the people have traveled from who are here. Uh, so thanks to those who dropped a pin on our map throughout the week. Uh, earlier today, we activated this map uh, to show our connected global community. So um, it's pretty cool to see. So as we wrap up, this year's Activate Conference, I'd like to discuss uh, some of the current and upcoming trends in search and AI. Um, to start, there's a great recent publication on search and AI called Machine Learning for Information Retrieval, uh, Neural Networks, Symbolic Learning, Genetic Algorithms, um, except for one thing, uh, by recent publication, I actually mean that this was written back in 1993 and published in 1995, talking about you know, using neural nets um, to, to power search. And while so much has happened in the industry and advancement well beyond the simple hop field neural networks that were covered way back then in the 90s, to the more complicated deep learning models being deployed today, the seeds were nevertheless planted two decades ago, and we've been building the future ever since. That future, which of course is now our present, looks very much like the word cloud uh, behind me representing this, the presentation abstracts, abstracts from this conference. Top terms include things like search, solar, fusion, learning to rank, semantic search, deep learning, but also cloud, Docker, Kubernetes, solar cloud, and auto scaling. And in between the two diverse skill sets of data science and DevOps, you also have traditional search engineering terms there, like faceting, highlighting, inverted indexed, text analysis. Just as we look back on that paper from 1993 and see the seeds of how machine learning would come to intersect with information retrieval for the coming decades, so too do I think it's useful for us to understand the seeds that were previously planted that got us where we are today. The first seed I want to talk about is, is big data, the big data seed. The idea of storing as much information as possible so that one day it might be made useful. And interestingly, for the first, I think for the first time ever this year, the word Hadoop didn't appear in a single talk abstract. One talk from Aaron Murphy at Commvault actually cautioned about the dangers um, and needless expense of dumping all of your data in a data lake before you know what you plan to do with it. So if I look at the Google Trends, um, you know, overall interest in big data is down, and overall interest in Hadoop is also down. Uh, both of them peaked uh, about the summer of 2015 on the sort of search trends. But interestingly, Apache Spark continues to rise despite the relative uh, decline in the overall interest in big data. And why is that? It's because Spark 
like Solar, isn't focused on the storage of your data. You can use almost any data store you choose, and Spark will gladly suck data out of it, process it efficiently, and generate derivative data with lots, um, derivative data with a, a much higher ROI for the development time spent than traditional Hadoop MapReduce would. Um, it also contains a lot of built-in machine learning capabilities as well. Our, as our CEO Will yesterday mentioned, uh, we're huge fans of combining the power of Solar and Spark together, and we do this in our technology stack and with our customers to provide the best in offline processing uh, from Spark and online querying from Solar to deliver a continuously learning system. And just as these trends show a shifting tide, so have we at LucidWorks also shifted over time as we continue to work with all of you to drive the bleeding edge of search relevancy within the industry. And in thinking about shifting trends, uh, what is neat to see in tracking this gathering year to year is how this conference has also evolved both in topic and in name over time. Uh, so in prepping for this week, I actually um, realized I'm apparently a big hoarder when it comes to conference t-shirts. Um, and these, these, you know, being from, uh, you know, the, the LucidWorks conferences over the year. Uh, but these shirts actually end up telling a useful story, uh, a story about shifting trends over, you know, the last decade. For example, back in 2010, LucidWorks started off with just calling this conference Lucene Revolution. As solar became more prominent and eliminated the need for most organizations to have to implement you know, the same search capabilities over and over again on Lucene, the Apache, Lucene, and Solar projects merged, and the conference uh, was likewise renamed to Lucene Solar Revolution by 2013. As another data point, um, this chart also adds the trend in interest in uh, deep learning to the mix, uh, the yellow line. Um, and, you know, as, as Amazon and Google, Alibaba and Baidu, and similar search leaders globally continue to raise the bar for customer expectations for search, so too are all of us in this, loom, in this room collectively raising the bar. While Lucene and Solar, and Solar are still our cornerstone, they're no longer independently sufficient. We need Spark for intelligent distributed batch processing. We need Solar for supporting real-time relevant queries at massive scale. And we need tools like Fusion uh, that provide us means of data ingestion, machine learning jobs that can automatically learn synonyms, misspellings, ambiguous terms and phrases, you know, generate knowledge graphs, perform entity extraction, and deliver fully customizable semantic search pipelines out of the box. We need search to be multidisciplinary, taking the best from DevOps, from Cloud Ops, from tech search, from personalization and recommendation systems, data science, and business domain experts to enable us to activate our data and maximize the impact. Because the real goal is not about collecting massive amounts of big data. The goal is to be able to get the right answers to important questions so that we can take action. And search is the de facto user interface for asking those questions and delivering the right answers. And today, that future of how we're able to ask questions of our data is increasingly looking like this. If you went to Sava Kolbachev and Sankit Shahan's talk today about enriching deep learning for a question answering system, you would see how they were able to build an end-to-end -end question answering system leveraging deep learning algorithms on Fusion, Spark, and Solar. In this case, you can see the question being asked was how, uh, sorry, can my wife drive on my insurance? And the response was, the answer is yes, unless your husband has coverage on a separate auto insurance policy. That's pretty good. Search here isn't 10 blue links. It is understanding the intent of the user and delivering the right answer, the actual answer. It's assistive and it's intelligent. Or if you attended the Red Hat talk by their senior software engineer, Manakandan uh, Savanasan, you would have seen how they utilize LucidWorks Fusion and Solar to power their customer portal and deliver and substantially drive down the cost of delivery um, you know, of their support staff. Um, because their customers generally want nothing more than to be able to self-solve their own problems without having to open a ticket and get a support person on the phone. By building a customer portal that understands user intent and can deliver 
uh, you know, them solutions to their problems automatically, Red Hat can save an enormous amount of money on support requests, and their customers can likewise save that same amount of time and be much happier. Or if you attended the cybersecurity with Apache Metron and Apache Solar Talk uh, by Ward Becker and Scott Cote, you would have seen how search is being used to drive intelligence around cybersecurity and real-time threat detection, an area that is becoming a hotter topic and greater risk to all of our organizations every day. Or if you attended my talk on how to build a semantic search system, Target's talk on identifying parts of an e-commerce query on target.com using search logs, and Symmetech's talk on entity extraction on product searches, um, or you know, the vectors in search towards semantic meaning talk from Simon Hughes, you would have seen numerous approaches for, for better query understanding, entity extraction, handling of domain-specific jargon, and overall substantially improved relevancy through contextually driven semantic search. And that doesn't even include half a dozen more talks on semantic search and data-driven relevancy techniques that I won't have a chance to personally to see until after the videos from this conference come out. And speaking of automatic learning, you all know that learning to rank continues to be a growing area of interest. Likewise, Solar and Fusion lead the way on machine learned ranking. Solar was the first openly available search engine to ship with learning to rank out of the box. Uh, this is thanks to Solar's continued focus relative to some other search engines on relevance and ranking, and on the beauty of being a community-driven open source engine where contributions are committed from many diverse sets of organizations across the globe. But like our earlier um, discussion, learning to rank has also been discussed in the literature since at least 1992. Realize that is six years before Google was even founded as a company. But with companies now being able to download solar and leverage learning to rank in a community-driven open source project, we're finally seeing the mass adoption starting, along with all the experimentation and innovation that comes with it from the community. We have, for example, at this conference, Bloomberg, who contributed the core learning to rank uh, framework to Solar. We've got Home Depot, who's using learning to rank to improve their type ahead service. And our own Andy Liu from LucidWorks showing how to practically implement numerous machine learned ranking approaches using Fusion and Solar. Now we talk a lot about the intersection of search and AI, about learning to rank, about you know, semantic search, about all of these things. Um, but that intersection where is where relevancy takes center stage. But what about all the other aspects of search that have, you know, the things that have to work as prerequisites to even having the discussion about relevancy? Which leads me to a really funny question to be asking for the first time during the last talk of the last day of a search conference. What in the world is search? Well, search is a lot of things. And doing them all by yourself is hard. It's relevancy, it's scale, it's user experience, learning to rank, semantic search, phrase detection, NLP, data, cross data center replication, classification models, highlighting, word embeddings, you know, some kind of crazy magic. That little white box with a magnifying glass. Search is a lot of things to a lot of people. And there are a lot of skill sets required to deliver a world class search experience. Because the reality is that Search is one of the most cross-functional undertakings you can imagine in any organization. To function optimally, you need experts in systems and network operations, software engineers, relevance engineers, data scientists, business and domain experts, and customers and their interactions and feedback, linguistics, and the list goes on. Linguists, sorry, and the list goes on. Uh, there are lots of skill sets required to deliver a world-class search experience. And in order to get the interesting data, to the interesting data science problems uh, around search and AI, you first have to make sure that your system can scale and perform. This may include sharding massive amounts of documents. Uh, this may include dynamically scaling replicas to adjust to query volume spikes, setting up cross availability zone and cross data center replication, often involving bidirectional syncing. Um, and for many, doing this across dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of nodes, all while adjusting to new business requirements and while maintaining near-perfect uptime with minimal response times. And if you attended this conference last year um, or have been following along closely in the community, 
you'll know that simplifying scaling and management of solar is one of our top priorities at LucidWorks. You may have seen the Slack talk this week about running solar on over 100 billion documents, but I can tell you that we have solar customers, some of whom you may have even met at this conference, with clusters serving multiple trillions of documents. That, is, that has historically always required non-trivial sized teams to manage and support, though. So what are we doing about it? Well, we're building software to drastically improve ease of operations across many large clusters to provide better control and visibility into operations and the health of the cluster and otherwise make operations of solar and of this ecosystem easier. With the ultimate goal of allowing the cluster to manage its own scaling operations. Based upon the policies you set up, um, and be able to you know, function within the parameters you need for your business. We've invested um, a ton in collecting the right metrics, making it possible to specify diverse sets of scaling policies, from where to split shards, to when to add replicas, to requesting more resources, to everything in between. And um, if, you know, if you attended the, the talk on um, cluster dynamics and solar auto scaling, you would have seen some of these slides around what we're doing here, uh, but just you know, as I mentioned a minute ago, there are already customers searching on trillions of documents in solar. Um, that scale is really unrivaled by any other search engine. Um, doing this is no small feat, though. It requires substantial teams of engineers to operate and set up. Um, and our ultimate goal is that solar's auto-scaling framework can seamlessly handle scaling to these numbers of documents in a stable fashion without having to wake up your ops team in the middle of the night. Now, over the last year, we implemented an auto-scaling simulation framework, which allows us to test out all of the mechanics of the auto-scaling policies and triggers that we've added to solar to ensure the internal mechanics work as expected. I'm happy to report that we've now completed this work and have even simulated scaling above a trillion documents in solar. We found plenty of edge cases along the way, which we've been addressing, um, and now we'd actually like to partner with those of you in the community to help test this you know, in, in real life. Um, so we're ready to do this for real, not as a simulation, but as a community-driven demonstration of what solar can do on real hardware. Um, so for all those of you here in the room, here's my challenge. If your organization has substantial spare server capacity and you'd be willing to temporarily donate it to the Apache Solar Committers to do a massive scale test into the trillions of documents, and we're probably talking hundreds of servers here, just to be clear. Um, I'd love to hear from you after the conference. There's plenty of large organizations here who I know might be interested in helping out. Um, and if so, let's do this together and make history. We've got the mechanics in place now. It's an expensive operation, but so many of you are critically dependent upon solar and us being able to make sure that not only is it possible to run at scale, but it's easy to run at these kinds of scales. So let's make history together. So some final thoughts before we wrap up the conference. As we close out and reflect back on what we've seen this week and what we see coming over the next year or so, there are a few industry level trends I think everyone should be mindful of. First, there's an ongoing shift away from big data and towards actionable intelligence. Data should drive answers to important questions and should drive action. Increasingly, intelligent organizations are moving from data silos to models where all of the data needed to make a decision is available to the people who need it. And search is the most fruitful place to create end-to-end -end feedback loops where the data can be used to drive immediate action. Because the people supplying you with much of your data are also the ones running searches and interacting with your search system. And they are also the ones who can directly and immediately benefit from the intelligent use of their data. Next, we're now used to Netflix, you know, Google Now, and Alexa at home. These systems will continue to get smarter and will continue to redefine customer expectations for what a search experience should be able to provide. Similarly, many organizations are undergoing digital transformations where a substantial portion of their customer interactions will transition online. Today, you walk into many stores, an auto parts store, a home improvement store, or even a grocery store, and ask someone, where do I find the, the replacement cloths for my push mop? 
how do you ask that to a search engine? Um, or even something like, you know, where do I find these? Holding up some random item from their house. Um, someone will help them find the answer if they go into the store. How do you replicate that experience online? How do you replicate that with the search engine? You know, visual search has implications here, maybe taking a picture, you know, sending it to the engine, trying to, to understand it and figure out what it's related to. Um, but, you know, semantic search also has some implications here, as do the question and answering systems that we were talking about earlier. But ultimately, assistive search is the new paradigm. And it requires personalization, understanding the user, um, you know, potentially voice input, depending upon what kind of device they're on. Um, image search, like we just talked about, it needs to be conversational. It can't be, I put in a question, and I get, you know, an answer, and then, you know, what if I have a follow-on question? It has to be conversational. It has to be contextual, understanding the person, where they're located, what searches they've run before. Um, and it has to go beyond links and information to answers and ultimately action. And search is now the de facto user interface for digital interaction with your customers. That little search box listens and responds to every keystroke or spoken word and can often complete your sentences for you, correct your mistakes, and even suggest things to you that were better than what you asked for. It learns from you and everyone who interacts with it so that it can be better and it'll be better and better every time you search and so that your company can ultimately stay competitive for, your, for their attention, the, their mind share or you know, the business of your customers. Every time a customer runs a search, clicks a link, interacts with the product, or provides input into the system, that is a digital moment to be captured, understood, and possibly acted upon. The digital moments of searching for a product, trying to connect to the right person, taking a next action, or trying to resolve a problem. The future of digital business hinges on the outcomes of billions of these digital moments and understanding how to interpret them and use them to drive relevant, personalized experiences for your customers. As our CEO Will said yesterday, our mission at LucidWorks is to let people maximize every digital moment through intelligent, assistive experiences that make their lives better at both at work and at play. And after this week, I hope you can see many new and improved ways in which you can do the same within your organizations. Because at the end of the day, search activates AI. It makes it usable and useful. It changes AI from an aspiration to a reality and into something that you can provide to your customers to drastically improve their lives. And that's something that I look forward to us all as a community continuing to make great strides on in the coming year. Because the future of search and AI starts now. And it starts with you. So thanks to everyone for a great week. I really hope you enjoyed the conference as much as I have. Uh, definitely wish you safe travels home. Um, I hear that um, we're you know, preparing for next year. I don't think the venue's been chosen yet, but you know, really excited to hopefully announce that before long. Um, so safe travels home, like I said. Look forward to seeing you all again here next year uh, with what I'm sure will be some amazing stories to tell about the future of search and AI. So thank you, everybody.